hope you enjoyed last week's episode because this is part two of that shit. We talked about other stuff. Uh, other shit. 90% of part two, I think, is us describing what would happen if Young Bucks and Kenny Omega came to the WWE. Because I think we just got off on a tangent. And you're talking with your hands and just freaking the fuck out right now. It's all good. This is episode 31, which is part two from episode 30. However that works, enjoy it. 31, I think they call it 31. Yeah, part two. <laughs> 30 part two, also known as 31. Dig it. Sucka. July 29th at the White Eagle in Worcester, <laughs> Massachusetts, is going to be Beyond Wrestling American Rana 18, meaning the year 2018, 2018, not the 18th, not the 18th, 18th anniversary of American Rana, <laughs> the 17th American Rana. Uh, it's yeah, it's gonna be fucking, it's gonna be dope. I already bought my ticket. You buy your ticket? Oh yeah. You buy your ticket? Cool. You guys want to like stand together? Yeah. And trash can's gonna. Yeah, we can stand together. We stand together with, uh, you know, now's a good time for some shout out to the Twitter fam. Yeah. Like, you, we're. Fuck you, guy. Wait. You, no, no, we what, like these people. What just happened? Why does it sound so weird? You took your headphones off and. Oh. Feedback. Whatever. Um, Motherfucker. Put them back on. I'm just going to take them off entirely. Okay. Um, put them down here. So, we, we're going to hang out with uh, with Jessica uh, Wrestlebrook yep. on Twitter. Come say uh, what's up. Rachel. Uh, Rachel's going to be there. I don't uh, know who Rachel is, but what's up? Rachel is the one with the pink hair. Oh, hey, blonde, yeah. Blonde hair and then pink at the end? Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, no, that's Alexa Bliss. Also, yes. Uh, Mr. John Olin. Yep. John Olin's going to be there. I'm sure many of the other Twitter family are yeah. going to be there. And Come say what's up. And we're all hang out and we're going to watch some crazy matches. You, you better be saving the best for last. Yeah. No, okay. no, no. No, see how I have it down and then i got to move it up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, all right, all right, So cool. the card is as follows. Yeah. Now. I want to preface this by saying this is not a super strong American Rana card, but any Beyond Wrestling card in general is incredibly good. Like, I haven't been to a uh, Beyond show and gone, oh, that wasn't that great. But I just think for their special show, it kind of just seems... I don't know. I, I think there's a other, lot of matches that I'm... Other than the main event. And, but, and I know there's a couple people that you're not huge fans of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we have the Beaver Boys versus Gentlemen's Club versus Massage Force versus Team Tremendous. That's gonna be awesome. I'm about that. Action. Any match with Dan Barry, I'm yes. fucking happy. Any match with Dan Barry, any match with Massage Force. Why did they change their name? I don't know. Is it I don't know. Still it's the, the same. same yeah, same guys. Right. Um, Gentlemen's Club is always fun. Beaver Boy is always fun. Um, it's John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Yes, yes, I believe so. So th- that match should be good. Um, nothing wrong with it. Team Pazuzu versus Team Women's Wrestling Revolution also should be very good. Um, Dickinson, Jacka, and EYFBO versus. I think I, think I heard Kimberly, Kimberly is Kimberly is, is, is the captain. The yeah. So uh, that I mean, like I said, it's not a bad card. No. I don't like. I don't want. I don't want it to come off saying oh, this fuck. Things gonna suck. It's not gonna suck. It's gonna be fucking awesome. I'm gonna wear like actual like running shoes instead of Vans this time. Well, there'll be Vans running shoes, but not like just regular Vans because my fucking knees hurt last year. We were also there for like 12 hours last year. Well, that last year was a double header, and we did both shows. Yeah, that was a that was our first show horrible as idea. a show. That was. We had shirts. We all wore our shirts. Yeah, we looked fucking stupid. Yeah, I know. That's okay. Yeah. Um, John Gresham versus MJF. That'll be good because that's that's a blo- I, uh, that's yeah. a feud match. Um, I like Gresham. I fucking love MJF and Stokely Hathaway. Is, is he's a great man? No, Stoke is still with MJF. Yes, because because they split up. Gresham got kicked out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so Gresham's the face now. That's weird. Uh, there's no way MJF is the face. Well, in this no, game. I'm. I don't think there's a face in the match. 
I don't know. Either way, it's going to be awesome. Oh, and yeah. I'm a huge fan of MJF. I like cuz I've met people like MJF like in real life and I fucking hate those people. And you know, so that'll be good. Um who else do we have? We have um Powerbomb TV Independent Wrestling Championship Hot Sauce Tracy Williams against Wheeler Yuta. That's going to be awesome. Dude, Wheeler Yuta is impressive as fuck. Oh yeah. Mm. Hot Sauce Tracy Williams very good. You know, I like it's gonna be a good match. Um this one actually looks pretty cool. Uh Matt Riddle and Filthy Tom Lawler against Nick Gage and Matt Tremont. Riddle's gonna die. I Lawler's hope, gonna die. I hope Matt Riddle wears shoes. Because there's a chance thumbtacks might be involved. Well, I don't know if you miss it. I said Nick Gage and Matt Tremont, so yeah. Um it's yeah, that's gonna be fucking brutal. Um, it, yeah, it, it's gonna be awesome. Two guys who are legit tough guys, and then two guys who are legit crazy guys. Yeah, pretty much. So that'll be fun. Uh, Brody King versus Josh Briggs. Go ahead. Brody King is just a shitty version of Josh Briggs. Now. Obviously, you know my feelings on Josh Briggs. I love Josh Briggs. Yes. Brody King's also been around a lot longer. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying oh, your, okay. your comparison is So is Josh poor. Briggs is a better Brody King. See, that that I... Okay. That, okay. It, it's uh, like, where did we see Brody King? Maine. We saw him at Limitless. Um, yeah. And it was, it was fine. I don't remember who he wrestled. I, I just, he's, like, they have a very similar look, and just I don't think Brody King's, uh, he does nothing for me. Does not juice the plums, if you know what I mean. Those are your testicles. In uh, this. Yeah, yeah, that's the I one. gotcha. Yeah. I can feel the juices in my plums. Um, Pierre Carl Willette, sorry about that, buddy, versus Brian Cage. Anytime you get to see Brian Cage wrestle, and, and it's pretty awesome. PCO was... He was in the WWE. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember what, what his name was in WWE. Was it Carl? I don't remember. Was it Pierre? I don't remember. Was it Outlet? I don't remember. I'm just going to keep saying this until you look it up. Yep, I'm looking it up. Um, oh, how about I just say the... Uh, the fucking uh, the thing. I'm a big Brian Cage fan. Yeah, we can cut most of this out. Sure, we can. And fix it in post. Or fix it in post. Uh, or we cannot to pad the episode. Quebecer Pierre. I don't know. Killer Carl Wallace. Chris Cannonball. I don't remember. Jean Pierre Lafayette. I remember he was in WWE. He was in <laughs> WWE. I don't know. Either way. He's fucking old. Um, and now he's he, also a massive human being. Yeah, he's he's a big and Actually, how big is he, Wikipedia? He is 6'1", 3 hundo. So, yeah. He's not terribly tall. But he's stuff. wide as shit. Brian Cage is... He looks like if John Cena got into shape. <laughs> you know, just yeah. with cooler facial hair. Um, yeah. It, that's oh, but, but, but hold on. <laughs> he's like John Cena got in shape. And then decided he can move like a cruiserweight. Yes. Yeah. It, it, Brian Cage is always fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that'll be cool. And then, it, I don't know, the main event looks like it's going to uh, Joey Janela, Penelope Ford versus David Starr, no rope barbed wire, whatever. I, no, skip it. Skip it. Yeah, I'm probably um, going to leave before that match. So we have been there for this feud, or at least I have. I you've think, been, I've been. I think I've been to every single match in this feud in Beyond Wrestling between as trash can to Joey Janela and and David Starr, and they've they've done it all to each other. They've they've done kosher salt into open wounds. Ugh. They've done skewers. They've done thumbtacks. They've done. Everything you could possibly think of to each other, in all in the name of who is the ace of Beyond Wrestling. It's it's Davidson, and they're finally absolutely 
They are finally culminating this feud in what Joey Janela is saying is his final death match of his career. Who knows? He might be trying to go legit. He's still going to bump like a madman. Yeah. And they have decided to take down the ropes, string up the barbed wire, and let's finish this like very bloody men. And this is what I've been hoping for since American Rana of last year. I think they stole the idea from you. See, now... I think actually our first episode you fucking mentioned that this is what you wanted so, to see. So someone... Somebody go back and listen. I don't... So someone to. on Facebook... Now this was... I believe... This was pre the first American Rana. Um, someone... By first American Rana you mean... Like, I'm sorry. Last year okay. was American Rana. Right. I was going to say that's... Yeah, no. <laughs> many years ago. Yeah. Um, so, someone uh, uh, beyond, whether it was Drew or whether it was someone who runs the social media accounts, I don't know what their back end looks like, posed the question of... Check out that back end. <laughs> they, they, they posted, like, a, a couple matches from the card, and one of the matches, uh, I, I believe this was the event just before American Rana, um, one of the matches was... Tremont and Riddle and someone posed the question of what what kind of match would, would, would be cool and barbed wire match was one of them and it ended up just being a like a like a standard deathmatch style barbed wire boards and stuff like that like it, you know and it was awesome so you know and this was kind of like it was either this event or the event before it was kind of the beginning um, at least of the the blood part of the feud between Janela and Star, and they had their matches, and I had posted on Twitter that the only way to culminate this feud. Now this is also before the New Year's Eve show, yeah, um, where they had the fans bring the weapons match, and I said the I I think the only way to end this feud is no rope barbed wire. And Janella uh, retweeted that with the happy emojis with the hearts for their eyes. And there were many of them. So Janella was obviously into this idea. Now, I obviously cannot confirm nor deny that this idea wasn't in place from the beginning. You know, because I also don't know what kind of permits and stuff you have to get to hold a match like this because obviously first and foremost you need the venue to agree with it you yeah know? yeah okay yeah well, you can have your wrestling show here <laughs> oh you want to put up barbed wire you know <laughs> what's your policy on fire and live animals? you know and and, and like <clears throat> you know, obviously i'm sure you know as soon as you announce that match the insurance for the event goes up too you know um and i'm assuming they might hire more medical crew just in case something does go wrong, you know, because yeah. both these guys are going to need to be cleaned up post-match. Um, yeah. And so will fucking everybody standing in front row, which should be us. Let's get there early. We're going to wear the, the 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 splash zone like tarps that you wear at SeaWorld. <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> just uh, just in case. Uh, so, I mean... Gigi Allen shows. Oh, God. <laughs> he's, he's dead. He is dead. He's buried in Ringe, New Hampshire. Right oh. up the street. Yeah, kind of. Well, it's only like um, 40 minutes away, whatever. So this this match is going to be... I have only ever been to one death match live. Um, bar, at least bar, you know, barbed wire ropes style yeah. death match. I've been to death matches. Yeah. Um, but I've only been to one... I went to a chaotic wrestling show... It tells you how old this is, um, where the main event was a King of the Death match. Uh, and I, I remember, you know, it was at the Lincoln Armory in Worcester. And uh, my dad got us in because that's where his office was at the time. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and we had front row seats. And they're like, uh, yeah, we're going to take a, a brief intermission before our main event. So I'm like, cool. And they start taking down the ring. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? Huh? This is, uh, what about the main event? You said there was a main event. What is going on? And then out come these spools of barbed wire. And I'm like, 
14, 15, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere around, I'm young, and I'm just looking going, oh, shit, because I had no idea, because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't going on the internet, I don't think Chaotic had a a website at the time, you know, it was just some random wrestling show in Worcester, and what transpired, I think there was six people in the match, was brutality. Yeah. Blood, fire, broken glass, barbed wire. The glass... <sighs> like, this was... I, I, yeah, glass, I don't know. It, it's... It, and and Because it can break smaller and then get in you more. Yeah. I, no. I, 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 think, I think seeing that match live at such a young age is why I don't really... I mean, obviously I squirm when, you know, when someone falls into a board wrapped in barbed wire and has thumbtacks all over it, you're going to feel that even though you don't feel it. But it, it's not something that, you know, it, deathmatch wrestling doesn't really freak me out. The only thing that freaks me out, I think, the is the anxiety of watching deathmatch wrestling, knowing that at any moment something could go horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. And, like, um, <laughs> we've all seen that video of the dude with the suplex under the light tubes that, like, Tears his arm open. Ugh. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it, it's. I hate. Ugh. It's crazy. I can't watch it. So, I mean, this is going to be a violent match. Yeah, and I, 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 I highly, highly recommend that. Uh, you know, obviously, everyone should should attend this show. This is going to be probably the best wrestling show that New England, perhaps even the East Coast, is going to see all year. But I think people should be well aware that what, this is not a WWE style hardcore match, even WWE style barbed wire usage. This is going to be real barbed wire. Two men, fully used real. Mm. Triple H did not. Uh, Orton did as well. Yeah. Or- Orton took real barbed wire bumps. Um, this is if you have never seen Joey Janela or David Starr. Wow. These two men will more likely than not end up in a local hospital. And this is not WWE. Oh, the they've been transported to a local medical facility. One of these, or if not both of these men, both. could end up in the hospital. Oh, no, no, no. I, I guarantee you both will. Th- they'll both be getting stitches. This, Glacier, fucking get ready. This will be... My buddy Glacier, he's a nurse, not okay. the wrestler Glacier. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Um, This will be... Perhaps the most violent match that New England has seen in years. Um, and that's cool because I'm going to fucking be there. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to get there. Doors open at what, 630? Something around that. So we'll get there at like 3. Yeah. The smoke butts outside yeah. and wait in line. That that guy, you know the guy, like scrawny guy with a beard. and He'll be there. So speaking of Beyond though. Yeah. So a Beyond mainstay. To Infinity and Beyond? Yes, but no. Okay. A mainstay of Beyond Wrestling, someone who I miss every single day. You should see his room. There's posters. It's, it's sad really as really creepy. Fuck. Is finally getting some TV time That's on right. NXT. Yep. Uh, like I said, I haven't watched it yet, but Mr. Donovan Dijak, I'm sorry. Chris. Chris Dijak yep. has had his second match on NXT television. Against this past week, Velveteen Dream against against their top guy. Like he, as, so right, he's wrestled Ricochet and he's wrestled Velveteen Dream. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, I'm assuming he lost because yes, it's Velveteen. He Dream. lost, but they're putting him and they're making him look strong. He's not going. It's not a squash match. He's not it's, jobbing. At, correct. He's not. He's not jobbing, and they're putting him up against top guys, and he's looking strong. He's Looking like fucking Dijak, and he's super heelish. Like he's he is heel hundred percent, which is weird to me, because around here he's a fucking hero. Some promotions, yeah, whatever. He's still a hero to me, goddamn it. And I think you know, I'm hoping next time he's on TV, he comes out. There's already a guy in the ring, squash match. We get to see him, but he fucking tossed. Velveteen Dream, and he goes, time to fly! Like, he's, you can tell he's definitely used to working smaller crowds, 
where when you yell shit, everybody can hear you. And I think that's I think that's cool as shit. And that's another reason why I love NXT because it's just a televised indie. Uh, I mean, yeah, and, and essentially NXT is full of performers that we've seen it beyond. Yeah. Um, we've got Warbeard Danny, Hansen. Danny Birch. Danny Birch. Oni Lorcan. Uh, Oni Lorcan. Dijak. Um, Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa. Johnny Gargano. I haven't seen those guys live. Kimberly but, but, yeah, people recently who are, yeah. was, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, we're, we're going to see, uh, we saw at TakeOver, and hopefully we'll see in ring soon enough, Keith Lee. Keith Lee, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm you know. hoping, and like bittersweet, but I'm hoping Rory Gulak does get signed. Yeah, I saw that, that he had his amazing. tryout, and you got to think that you know his uh, him Dr- and his brother Drew, is a fucking tag team. Yeah, the amazing Gulak killing Gulaks. it on two hundred five. Um, I think that would be really great. Obviously, I don't want to see him go, but at the same time, you, you know, this is I don't care who you are, I don't care. Uh, how big your ego is, how big your pride is. If you were a professional wrestler and you don't dream about working for WWE, you're a fucking liar. Correct. Unless you have a sweet gig and you sell t-shirts at Hot Topic. Like, I fully understand why. I 100%, 100% guarantee, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, we will see oh, the at Bucks some point, yeah. and we will see Omega in WWE, yeah, hundred percent. Right, they'll they'll get an offer that's just like I'm gonna pay you twenty million dollars to wrestle. For they'll me. probably get a little bit of creative freedom too. In ooh, that's dangerous. Well, not Hogan and Nash style creative freedom, but like we're we're you know essentially there's gonna be a thing in their contract that says we promise not to bury you on the pre-show. Yeah, you know, like I honestly, um. I honestly think it will probably happen sooner rather than later because WWE, when it comes to guys like that, like Styles, like Austin Aries, they try to grab them at their the, the pinnacle of their popularity outside of WWE. Um, Ricochet, same thing. You know, uh, Cole. They, they try to grab these guys when they're at their most popular. Because Michael Cole? No, Adam Cole. Oh, that makes more Baby. sense. Um, He's going to fight Shawn Michaels. I hope so. That's going to happen. That's going to be so you fucking know, good. So, so from what I've heard, the average salary for an NXT performer is like thirty to 40000 a year. There is no way Adam Cole's making $30,000 a year. No. Like, you know, like... I, I think that at the same time, the Bucks and Kenny Omega would not be on NXT. See, I think that they, I think that they might. Why? Why would you? Top talent, like you legitimize, like NXT is legit already. You because you, you, all of those names that we just mentioned, Ricochet. Adam Cole, War Machine, um, uh, fucking, wow, I just blanked, uh, Tommy End, you know, all of these huge independent names that have come in over the past couple of years, NXT is legitimized. You say huge indie names, you can't go and buy a Tommy End t-shirt at Hot Top, you never could. Well, you know, like, like I, I'm just saying, like they're they're transcending. They are wrestling into but, pop culture. But I think that the Bucks they are very, very much right place at the right time. Oh, absolutely! Because they got in with pro wrestling tees at the ground floor yep. when they were nothing when pro wrestling tees was essentially out of a dude's basement yeah they happened to be at new japan at the same time the bullet club was rising the americans go together yep that's just the way it works yep 
I am not saying that Matt and Nick are not amazing talents, but they also got really lucky to just have the right concoction of just fate and and destiny and talent intertwined at the same time yeah. to create the Young Bucks brand, to create the Elite brand. Yeah. And their so, TV show or YouTube show is fucking great. Well, and and actually, it was, it was funny. I was I was thinking about this earlier. That um, do you watch that on a regular basis? Not on a regular basis. You should. I know, but um, I was thinking about this that that whole YouTube show thing. The last time we saw that be really successful for a pro wrestler was Zack Ryder. Yep. He took himself from the Job Squad. To Intercontinental Champion. For a whole day. Oh, well, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. To United States Champion. That was his big, like, run as a yeah. champion. And and someone actually posed the question earlier, and I'm, I apologize, I don't remember who it was on Twitter, but that, who is the most underrated wrestler in WWE? And I said Zack Ryder. For, for, without even question, it's Zack Ryder. He could be a solid... U.S. champion or IC champion. I I don't see him ever being I world think, champion. I think but he could he could be a main event star because every every time he has momentum, he moves so quickly to the same point every time, and then he gets buried. Yeah, every single fucking time. The biggest pops I remember, um, in, in so. So, like, pre, like, Shane coming back and pre the Dudleys coming back and the Hardys and all that stuff. Biggest like, pop ever I've ever heard was the Hardys. W- like, so, so this is like the, you know, we'll call it, it's the Del Rio era. It was that time. Was Zack Ryder winning the U.S. title. It, it was huge. It was huge. It, him winning the IC title at WrestleMania. Huge pops. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's, I feel like criminally underrated, underutilized. And his girlfriend's hot. She's also a hot mess. Yep. She is a hot mess. She is a hot mess. Chelsea Green. Yep. So when it when it comes to the Bucks, the Bucks have leverage right now. And the same goes for Cody. Cody Rhodes is not done with WWE. No. Oh, good God, no. And he'll say that, too. Yeah, and he, he said it. He's like, I didn't storm out. I didn't, you know, have a falling out with them. I left. I I was Yeah, he you notice he never really says anything bad like no. like the Bucks will say like kind of well, You, you got to think that, you know, he he came into that company. And I'm not saying he got in there because of his name. But Dusty Rhodes' son is going to make a lot more friends a lot quicker than Chris Dijak. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he knew Vince since he was a child. Yeah. Like, Vince is like an uncle to him. It's like, you know, he doesn't... I, I, I 100% believe Cody when he says, you know, I have nothing bad to say about WWE. No. Because he doesn't. They... They, they parted on, you know, you know it was he, fine. He, he was like, I'm going to go... You know, he even said, he's like, when he left WWE, he's like, you know, I don't think I was ready for that the spot that I had. You know, he wanted to hone his craft. He wanted to learn. He wanted to wrestle different styles. He wanted to travel the world in a different way, in a way that was more his own. Yeah. And that's what he's done. And he's done very, very well for himself, you know, without his name. The name means nothing. He's done this on his own. Yeah. And, I mean, I respect the shit out of Cody Rhodes. Yeah. You know, he he's done fantastic things he will be back and he will be a main event star in wwe he was very young when he was in wwe yeah he's super young isn't he he's only in his His early 30s i think yeah maybe he might even still be late 20s i don't think so i think he's early 30s his wife also is quite attractive um it's another person you know everyone's like oh you know he left because they fired brandy it's like Brandy has been very open about she got let go because yeah, she wasn't ready. He's 33. Yeah. You know, even she admits she's like, I wasn't ready, you know, for, for that spot. Yeah. You know, and she has also honed her craft, 
you know. So, I mean, the fact uh, to say that we'll never see Cody Rhodes back in WWE is an insane statement to make. He was trained by Al fucking Snow. Absolutely. Al Snow's trained a lot of guys. In Glacier, yeah. Um, so, the, so Not the male nurse, the actual yeah, wrestler. Yeah, the, the actual wrestler. Glacier. Um, so we will, I mean, like, so from what I'm hearing is we're about to enter the bidding war because both... All, all of their contracts, I think, are up at the end of the year. Because yeah. Japan only does, like, one-year, two-year contracts. They used to only do one year, and then when AJ and Shinsuke left, they started doing multi-year deals. Yeah. They, it was like January 20th is contract day. Yeah. So, so there's going to – because you know 100% that on January 1st or what you know, sometime before that, the Bucks – Omega and Cody, all of their phones are going to ring. Yep. And on the other end of the line is going to be... Hey, kid, what are you doing? Vince. Hey, pal. Triple H. Uh, John Laurinaitis. It's going to be someone. I have a John Laurinaitis voice. Um, People power. Oh, I love Johnny Ace. I really do. I thought John Laurinaitis, like the heel John Laurinaitis that we got on WWE television was amazing. <coughs> um, what if it's Jeff Jarrett on the other line? On the other Jeremy anymore. Borash could be him. Um, I mean, come down, all of them are going to get phone calls. All of them have already received phone calls. Yes. We know. Because there is no possible way. I know that we like to pretend that Vince doesn't believe anything exists outside of WWE. He's a businessman at the end of the day. And what he is going to see, he might not see their talent. But he sees he might not signs. see their charisma, but he sees their worth. Yep. And I think that's the most important thing. Unfortunately, sometimes worth is not necessarily the best wrestler. Yeah. But in this case, they're one and the same. Yep. You have one of the greatest tag teams of all time who are still also very young, very early in their career, so to speak. You've got a top Canadian talent, and you've got someone who has made a name for themselves who already knows how your business operates. Who already had a name for themselves. You, like, if you are not looking at these people, you know, the fact that at the end of the day, Vince controls the public image of of his talent. Yep. At the end of the day, you if you are a WWE performer, you cannot wipe your ass in public without Vince's permission. Well, I mean, you can't really do that anyway. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, the fact that on a web series that essentially is... 99% WWE talent in Up, Up, Down, Down. You had the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega with the New Day. Yeah. And Vince... If he you, okayed it. If you were to tell me that Vince couldn't shut that down, he absolutely could. Yeah, he shut down a fucking show at a building he doesn't own. Like, absolutely be like, you know... Yeah, uh, Woods, come in here. You know, uh, you you can't, uh, you can't, you can't do that. You know, because uh, you know what what's Woods gonna say? Well, what are you gonna do? Fire me? Yes, yes, he will. And I already let you get away with fucking Page with fucking Maddox. You know, like yeah, it. You know, it's just it's to me, uh, it's. You know, it happened because Vince allowed it to happen. And hey, pal. Vince allowed it to happen because even though Up Up Down Down is a video game YouTube channel run by a WWE performer, it gets, if it gets 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 views, that's 500,000 eyes that just saw at least one WWE performer <coughs> and who's now thinking about WWE. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's marketing. This was something that 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 Wood started in his own spare time, something that he just enjoyed doing, you know, which is awesome. I love Up Up Down Down. I think it's awesome, especially when he's playing games with like 
like you know Styles. Styles is a huge gamer. Yeah, uh, I love Joe. Fucking... You know, Samoa Joe's a huge gamer, and it's really cool to Are you see him, him fat. Yeah, he's the Samoan that the other Samoans don't want to play with. It's true. Um, Cause he ain't a cousin. No, and, and it's just it's like, but at the end of the day, you know, it's um, it's like. We are going to see. Uh, um, what did they do? They what was the the old promotion they put on the WWE Network? And the the fucking the the thumbnail was Kenny Omega. And they, they FCW. Talked, no, it was it an FCW. Yeah, it was an FCW. Um, um, and I think he was he still called Kenny Omega back then. I think he was, and he gave like a promo. Somebody who wasn't used to doing promos. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember, but but this was right after um, Dominion. Yeah, WWE was riding the wave of the popularity of yeah. Kenny Omega in a way that they were like, they were just like, "Fuck it, we can do this." Yeah. You know, what are you going to do about it? We own the rights to this footage, yeah. so you know, it's WWE is completely aware of their surroundings as much as they don't necessarily show it. Yeah. Um, well, fucking uh, Zombie Princess there, Jimmy Jacobs, yeah. he was fired because he was a WWE employee and took a picture with the Young Bucks. Yeah. I don't know. Yet, the WWE talent were over in Japan Taking pictures with everybody. With everyone, uh, so so it was a uh, it was it was uh, Bailey and Ibushi, which yeah. makes more sense because he was in the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. So that was, but I saw other pictures with other talent. Um, and, I'm uh, glad he wouldn't commit to WWE. No, he especially because that's I, the only reason why he didn't win the Cruiserweight Classic. He yeah. was gonna he was gonna win, but he didn't want to sign. A he contract. didn't want to sign a full time contract, and they were like, "Well, you have to," which, which is funny because as soon as he said no, he blew up in New Japan. Yeah, because would, he because he had international exposure. Right. All of a sudden, New Japan they're not dumb either. They're right. like, "Shit, Americans want to see this guy now. Cool, get him. You know, push him up the card." Yeah. You know, which which is great, and and he did fantastic. I kind of want to go back and rewatch that. It's just it's depressing to me because there's so many good people in that fucking tournament. It, what depresses me most is there was so much potential for T.J. Perkins, and he wasted it. I don't feel like booking or creative wasted it. He, I, I felt like he. St- he hit the main roster, and he just kind of stopped caring. Is he still? He's still active? around. Is yeah, he? I, I, I just because they ran that that feud with Brian Kendrick because Kendrick trained him. Yeah, and it was kind of like it got kind of lame. Yeah, but it seemed like he was just like eh, whatever, you know. And two hundred five live would be dead if it weren't for Ali and Murphy. Yeah. Who are actually carrying that fucking show on their backs. Mustafa Ali wears the same shit that Roman Reigns does. Only he is but he's like, far more entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Like the uh, was it last week? So this week. He did a Spanish fly. From the barricade yeah. onto the ounce table. I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw that gif and I thought it was Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Reigns hit a Spanish fly. I was like, Whoa. Holy shit. I was like hold the fuck on. Roman Reigns is doing that, but he's he punches people and tackles them like that's his big moves. And, and then and then I like watched it again. I was like, oh, never mind. And it's the shittiest spear in the business. <laughs> it's not that good. He just kind of like falls into you. Goldberg, at the end of the day, didn't really even know how to wrestle. No, but he would just <laughs> fucking cut you in half. You know, Rhino is the same thing. Edge ended his career by spearing people too hard. Yeah, <laughs> like. Yeah, Reigns goes, ooh, ah. He sucks. Yeah. I watched the WWE 24 on the Hardys, and they I heard kept, it was super good. Dude, they kept showing the fucking, the, um, when Jeff's on the, like, holding the belt. And oh, Edge, and Edge spears him just off. Just destroys him. It's like, fuck, man. You wonder why Jeff got addicted to drugs. Yeah. It, 
whatever happened to his DUI charge that he got like last year? It was like this time last year. No, I think that was like four or five months ago. Was it? It was. It was like within within a year. And even my wife was like, "Oh, I remember when that happened." I think that's how I'm gonna get my wife to actually like start watching wrestling a little bit. Because if I watch like documentaries on the WWE Network. She'll be like, oh, okay. Because she and, sees, and like, watch it. 30 seconds of wrestling and then people talking. Correct, but... It's like the real housewives. You get sucked in. But and with a like, little bit of wrestling. What's happening with these people? Like, Holy Foley, she watched every episode oh, Holy, Holy Foley. Holy Foley was great. It was pretty good. It, it To me, at the end of the day, I know all reality shows are cut together to look like a completely different story than what actually happened. Yeah. But... N- having read Foley's books and having seen a lot of information about his personal life, yeah. it seems like a lot more realistic than a lot of your I don't traditional even care if reality it's not. shows. And Dan Barry's on it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's true. But you know, at are the, they are they doing a second season of that? Because I, just I don't think like, so. They, I think they canceled a lot of the network exclusive shows that went in the same cut as uh, Pyro. Right. I, re- I remember yeah. Pyro. That used to be yeah. a cool thing. It was cool, but here's the thing about Pyro. Now, we're talking about the American Gladiator, Pyro. No, we're talking no. about Malibu, the American Gladiator. Gotcha. Uh, but no, Pyro, do you still watch their pay-per-views, even though they don't have Pyro? WWE? Yeah. Y- yeah. Okay, there you go. So why the fuck are they going to spend that money if you're still going to watch Um Think about it. But I'm still going to complain about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm still going to be unhappy. Right. Complain all you want, but you're still going to fucking watch it. You still got your fucking money, dummy. So I, I, I don't understand. Like, I understand maybe cutting... That's how business works. Maybe cutting out the $7,000 worth of pyrotechnics that you put off at the beginning of the show and maybe just utilize it for those select entrances that use it. Yeah. That- Remember they used to do fucking pyro, like... On raw, like not even not even pay per views. It's just like, well, I'm running here. Yeah, it's like you don't need that. What, You're at the fucking centrum, and it's super loud. What anyway. really pissed know. me off is the only pyro really at WrestleMania was the fireworks that go off around the the arena. Yeah, like um, best pyro of all time, Dwayne Gill. <laughs> just shitty spark. It's Gilbert. <laughs> it's Gilbert. He'd spray him. <laughs> Oh, man. He came back during the Festival of Friendship. That was... Also, if anybody wants to send us a gift, I would love a framed print of the the Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, like the the Sistine Chapel ceiling. I don't know. Just saying, if you want to send us a gift, you can. How famous do we have to get before people just start sending us stuff? I don't know. One What's... time I got a really nice gift from the MGB podcast. Thanks, guys. Hey, MGB Podcast, I, I'll be on your show. This was before I was on their show. They With my me. daughter. We can do like That's a, not a horrible right, idea. Right, isn't that a great idea? Graham, hook it up. Let's make that. So. I didn't mean to snap my fingers in. Yeah, yeah just, whatever. Don't worry about um, it. Back, back to finish out what we're talking about. I think that Bucks and Omega would elevate NXT to a whole different level than it already is at. But yes, going straight to the main roster. Okay, so would you be thirty thousand dollars a year, even if they hold on, sign hold on. hundred thousand dollars a year. I bet you they're making more. I never, I never finished that thought either. You know, obviously Adam Cole's not making thirty thousand dollars. The Bucks and Omega would get signed in that same idea of they'd be making main roster money one way or the other. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. They may be big names, but they're not Brock Lesnar. They're not The Rock. They're not John Cena. They're not The Undertaker. They're not going to be making one point two, one point six million dollars a year. They're probably going to be, you know, I I think like your your I've been here for a couple of years. Main roster guys are making like one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year. No, I, uh, yeah, I don't know what anybody makes. I think Brock Lesnar makes like nine million a year. Well, which is fucking nuts to to, me. to, to not be there. Yeah, like he's getting paid just to jerk off and fuck Sable. Does she still look good? She doesn't look bad. No. Yeah, I think she's probably in her fifties at this point. Yeah. 
Look at uh, Trish Stratus. Holy Elizabeth shit. Elizabeth Hurley? She looks good. Oh, the actress. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of a wrestler named Isn't Selma Hayek Hayek in, like, in her 40s? No, I think she's older than that. Yeah. But God damn. Looks good. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, I think, you know, when the Bucks and, and Omega and Cody Rhodes comes back, I think, A, they'll probably – WWE will try their hardest to get all of them at the same time so they can be like so so they can fight Finn Balor, the club and AJ Styles. Boom. So mind blown. New Japan owns the Bullet Club. Yes. Like the rights to the Bullet Club. What about the Elite? Uh, is I, that owned by New Japan or is that owned by the Bucks? I don't know. Cuz if they could come in as the Elite, you have the club versus the Elite. You just WWE just fixed ten years worth of bad booking. They're just printing money at that point. Like I, I'd watch that, but m- merchandising alone, yeah, make them rich beyond their wildest dreams. That is correct. Um, so I don't know. It, it's it's only a matter of time. You know, we'll see. So, goddamn monopolies. Goddamn monopolies. I think we've said a lot of things. Guess who? Don't break the ice. Risk. I just said a lot of things, too. Board games. Board games. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed what is... Episode 27. This... No. What? No, this was... this 20? 30? 30. So this is 30... Ah, I was just guessing. This is 30. And Holy 31, shit. because... This is a two-part episode because someone's going to Ohio, which you, the listeners, didn't even realize at the beginning because I didn't say anything until the last fucking ten minutes. I didn't realize it until he wrote it on a card I wrote like it on ten a minutes note. ago. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed last week's episode and this week's episode. We had a lot of fun. You know what? I don't even know why I'm saying this. We could just say it in the fucking intro. Yeah, motherfuckers. Ow. <laughs> you do drop ceiling here. Good night, everybody. Night. Young Bucks.